The news is Connor Stallions has a new job coaching football. And I hope that he gets to use Axel Foley's t-shirt whenever he's on the sidelines because little known fact, Mumford High, you know, it's where Axel Foley went. So he in good company there. But it's it's funny because we were always wondering what was going to happen with Connor Stallions, regardless of what goes on with the investigation with the NCAA. But as background here, and one of the reasons this story is so wildly covered is because Connor Stallions is at the root of an advanced scouting scandal in which he was recording video of signs from teams that they might play and teams that they would play basically over the course of a couple of years. He got hired at Michigan in May 2022 for 56 grand, And since resigned November 3rd, after news had broke that they had indeed engaged in this advanced scouting, sign stealing, cheating by any other means, and we knew that football was going to be difficult for this man to get back into because as the man who hired him said, that is one, <laughs> William McMichael, whose kid's actually pretty damn good, I got the most hated man in college football right now, Connor Stallions, and he's my defensive coordinator. Seems to be very proud of that fact. It also feels like he's very proud to give a Michigan man an opportunity to coach football, and he did his due diligence, right? It's not as if Connor Stallions doesn't know ball, Because you're not interested in hiring somebody to be a high school defense coordinator who doesn't know ball, especially when they come with this sort of infamy, right? There's only a handful of people in college football that are excited about Connor Stallions, okay? I would venture to guess that many of those people have ties to the University of Michigan, and this is just another way in which networking pays off and knowing a bunch of people pays off. Because the thing that I thought was interesting is, one— William Mumf- oh, excuse me, one more. William McMichael's kid had committed to Michigan, and that is how he got to meet Connor Stallions. As a matter of fact, the quote he gave to the Detroit News is, Jeremiah committed to Michigan, and I met Stallions during the recruiting process. He's outstanding. I think he knows Michigan's defense just as well as anyone else who was there with former defense coordinator Jesse Minter and all of those guys. So it's not as if he doesn't know the man, and I'm sure that they went through a, a hiring process of some sort because you got it. I mean, it's, it's a public high school. However, I am going to say, we'll see how this goes, right? The sign-stealing untold documentary that's going to appear on Netflix comes out in just a couple of weeks. No, over just a week away. I mean, we're talking about August 27th now. And yeah, it's August 16th, right? We're thinking about a mm, week and a half. The reception around this is going to be interesting because I wonder when the timing of the NCAA's you know, a decision is going to come down because there's been this notice of allegations that we're still trying to figure out what the punishment is going to be about. But we do know that the NCAA is going to be very serious in how they did this. There are allegedly five current and former UM coaches that committed level one NCAA violations. Uh, Sharon Moore might face a show cause penalty. We know that Jim Harbaugh got a show cause penalty. We also know that this is the kind of Bishop Sycamore space that we're in right now because Mumford wasn't very good in 2022 or 2023 and it was 1-8 and and hasn't had a winning season since 2019 so we've had an actual plague and some years and they still haven't had a winning season if Stallions is actually that good at a coordinator uh, we'll find out but the the joke is already going to be built in on this in that oh well he must know the signals and high school football is brutal those of y'all that are going to high school football games on Friday nights before you go watch your college football team? No. Parents, no, they don't They don't like this not one bit. Parents is going to show they hole behind on this one. You're going to see some loud signs. You're going to see some signs that wouldn't make it on the big noon, wouldn't make it on the game day. You're probably going to see some profane gestures when Mufford comes through town. That's the thing that I'm really interested in seeing. I want to see, okay, I know McMichael wanted to do this. I know that that's his defensive coordinator. I know... The hire also is going to come with all its attention. I just don't know that the school system is going to want all of this attention. And I'm already curious what the stipend is to be defensive coordinator at Mumford High, which is, you know, coming back off a, a one, a, coming off a one-win season. I don't know that a defensive coordinator hire is going to change a whole bunch about that unless they can do, a, again, there's, there's jokes, a level of recruiting that might, let's say, 
promote the NCAA to investigate Mumford if they were indeed an NCAA institution. And the reason I'm talking about this is, frankly, because Michigan is fascinating, and we always want to have something interesting to say about a fascinating story here on the show. And I keep chasing this one down, and I understand it's getting on the people's skin, but until, until such a time as we get something like resolution or even start playing football, this is probably going to keep popping up. And in this way, you're not going to just see this show talking about this. You're going to see a lot of shows talking about this for the same reason that we would talk about Coach Prime and Colorado. It is the news, right? I always say folks get the news they deserve. Folks get the analysis they deserve and want, right? There's a reason why TMZ is more read than the New York Times, right? There's, there's reason for this. Even saying TMZ or the New York Times has incited a political discussion, which it's not the intention there, but I can already see how some people have decided who's telling them the truth and who is not, who is lying, who is not. And that's at the heart of this, right? The heart of this is rhetoric. It is, are you offending the public sensibilities? And if you are, are you contrite about that? It's proven to work in our country that if you are contrite about what you did wrong, we're more than likely going to give you another shot, right? Unless it's absolutely egregious. And there have been there there are levels to this. There's standards to decorum. There's standards to speech. And usually, what we're doing here is not having an argument to see who can win. We're having an argument to come to some sort of a resolution. As a matter of fact, one of the first things you learn in rhetoric is that conceding is a form of winning. It it, it is winning, right? Because everybody's happy about this, and that's what you want. You want folks to be in a frame of mind where they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. We are not inclined to do that with Connor Stallions. We're not inclined to do that with Michigan. And that's got everything to do with how we feel as opposed to not just what the facts are. Because sometimes things like lying to the NCAA about buying some hamburgers is lying, right? Stop there. It's lying. That we don't like. Buying the hamburgers, I really wish that he could have just said, I bought the hamburgers. And then we get to go, y'all really going to be on this man's head for buying some some hamburgers? Is that what you're going to do? Instead, we on this man's head for lying about it, right? I think that's where we're at now. And as... Connor Stallions has enjoyed his role in helping Michigan quite literally win a national championship, go 15 and 0. It doesn't feel like this man is contrite, which is why I'm fascinated to find out what's in this untold documentary. What, you know, and sometimes when we do these things, a sports fan will watch these sorts of documentaries hoping to find out something new. And they're really just rehashing the stuff that we already know because we have been all over this story since the time it broke. So we're really going to just be watching body language. And how people choose to talk about who it is that they're talking about. But, it, I mean, it's almost like the Urban Meyer Florida Gators one they did last year. I just didn't think there was much there. Same thing with Johnny Manziel. I didn't think there was much there. And I don't know that there's going to be a lot here uh, when we're talking about this stuff. But we'll, we'll watch it for sure, right? We, we will watch it. And I'm, I'm going to take notes. Until then, I thought this was just funny. Like, I, I wanted to talk about this because I think this is a great sports talk show segment. Because you really can't say much more than what's there. You're only going to field opinions on why make this hire. And only thing I can come back to is if you think he's a good football coach, you make the hire. It also helps that he's bringing with him a level of acclaim. It's just not necessarily the acclaim that we all would like to be associated with.